Well, welcome to The Boiling Point. I am Richie Ware, and I hope you are having an awesome day. Speaking of awesome, Jude Wolf, Boiler University instructor, excited as ever. What is not to be excited about in this facility? That's right. You get to be able to hang out and talk about steam. Speaking of steam um, and boilers, sometimes you get a little scale, and I wanted to talk about that today. Um, thought we'd talk about you know, what scale is and where it actually forms, um, and then maybe talk some, some prevention. So why don't you walk us through some scale here? All right, well, scale is the enemy of your boiler. It's probably one of the number one death causing to boilers occurrences. Uh -huh. And uh, the sad thing about it is it's preventable. Mm. So there are different types of scales and different routes of prevention. Um, most common scale is calcium magnesium scale because most of the water in the U.S. is hard water, and if we don't remedy that with a softener, um, we're gonna end up with chunks of scale in the boiler. Mm. And uh, you know, when we get scale in a boiler, it's got a lot of drawbacks. First, we lose efficiency right out of the gate because we start coating tubes, we don't get the heat transfer. And then in the long term, if we're not transferring heat from the metal, we're fatiguing the metal, and we overheat it, and we melt, and we have a failure. Mm -hmm. So different types of boilers get different types of scale. Mm -hmm. Water tube boiler is going to get scale inside the tubes because that's where the water is. Mm -hmm. um, fire tube boiler, we're going to get scale on the outside of the tubes, and this is, you can't make this stuff up. This is natural, found in the wild scale, and may have come out of a boiler that, uh, had to put a rental in there because right. it's not a it's not a quick fix. But proper water softener maintenance testing is going to ensure that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. There are other types of scale that we get in the system: uh, silica scale, which comes from the water coming in. We can't remove that with a water softener. Mm. So if we've got silica, we've got to use chemicals in the boiler and blow down to keep that below a threshold where it's going to form. Mm -hmm. And then we get iron scale. Because if our condensate forms in the system, it's acidic. If we don't have proper chemical treatment in the system, we get that iron back to the boiler. And iron scale is very highly insulative. So we really want to watch that and maintain our condensate system. So it's funny how it all comes full circle. Mm -hmm. You know, we, bring, we can bring scale in, we can get scale back from the system. Right. We can get process contaminants back in the system. So that's where just keeping an eye on your boiler and keeping an eye on the numbers, it's gonna keep that in good shape. Is this a, a, a creep type thing or is this, could this be an instant type thing that you could just scale a boiler quick or does it take time? Well, in the majority of cases, scales forming slowly over time mm -hmm. just due to intermittent issues with a water softener. Mm -hmm. But we've definitely had uh, units that we've sent out or started up and in, in a week's time we can have measurable scale on the tube mm -hmm. and I've seen rentals that went in pristine and in one calendar year they're just being hauled out to be retubed due to total failure so mm -hmm. you got to stay on top of the water softener it's really your first and most important line of defense and stay on top of your chemicals because they're designed to help keep the scale from sticking to the tubes. So anything that bleeds through the water softener stays in solution so that when we blow down and skim the boiler, we can remove that. But you know, you're gonna get early indication of scale through your stack temperature. Mm. When you're not getting that heat exchange, your stack temperature's coming up. Right. And in the long term, you're gonna see it in your fuel bill, but fuel bills tend to creep up over time anyway, right, right. so it's a little less obvious. The county's not gonna call you and say, hey, did you scale your boiler up? But, sure, but sure. you will eventually have water running out the back, and that's always sort of a red flag. Yeah, you probably know that that's, <laughs> that's a problem. So, and I know like in this particular, this is actually a superheater uh, tube, and I know that there was not any scale in the other part of the boiler, um, but it was stuck in the superheater. Well, the interesting thing about a superheater is there's no chemicals designed to be in there. There's no water designed to be in there. Mm -hmm. So if the chemicals in solution um, or the scales in solution, skimming and things take care of it. But if it gets carried out with the steam due to sudden load swings or if those levels get too high, it can deposit in a superheater tube and that's just especially fatal 
because you know you think superheat it's not hotter than anything else but we're counting on just the steam to carry heat away and so when we start putting deposits in there it, it's it's like having scale in a boiler but eight times worse right and and this is an example of, of carryover um, at the steam outlet where we're getting priming from too many solids and stuff going into the steam system you know we we blow down the boiler and we have the chemicals in there to take care of the boiler but we really don't have anything in the steam system itself you know there's no blow down in the steam system there's nothing that we add to the steam system to get rid of it so once it gets out of the boiler it will show up in your traps and your superheaters and your steam lines and and it's sometimes catastrophic as far as uh, water tube fire tube is there one that's more forgiving that has scale or are they both pretty much the same well i think fire tubes are inherently easier to fix if they're mm -hmm. scaled mm -hmm. because the straight tubes can be removed and replaced a little faster water tubes a lot of times you get custom bent tubes and membrane tubes and, and they're not nearly as accessible mm. so if you've got a water tube boiler you've got to stay on the water treatment because it's just there's no going back once you plug a tube you know you're gonna have a major repair when you say stay on the water treatment um, you know obviously a lot of the boiler operators are not chemical folks sure so when you say stay on it what are they actually staying on well if you're an operator you got to be a chemical guy to some extent mm -hmm. you need to be testing your water softener daily because mm -hmm. your chemical guy is not going to be there every day right and if we can get meaningful scale in the boiler in a week then you know those test results are going to dictate whether we need to take action mm -hmm. and the chemical levels the phosphates and the polymers that prevent that from adhering to the tubes if we don't keep those levels where they need to be and you don't have to be a chemical genius or engineer to do that mm -hmm. but you got to do the testing daily and you got to make sure that it's in parameters mm. and if you've got very little condensate coming back you just have to be all the more vigilant mm. you know if we only fill the boiler once and all that condensate came back and we reused it we wouldn't be worrying about water treatment or scale in the boiler mm -hmm. but all the fresh water coming in is just an opportunity for deposits and issues so right. you know you're not a chemical guy but no chemical company is going to write a check to retube that boiler That's right. it's your equipment so at the end of the day you've got to be the last line of defense you've got to be vigilant and, and do the testing and, and do the blowdowns. is that a daily thing absolutely okay um, on a industrial process boiler those chemical tests should be done daily and in many cases where we've got a lot going into the process we may test those chemicals every shift every eight hours mm. um, and the same is true for blowdown you know if we've got a, a, a little boiler heating a church we might be able to blow that boiler down once a day but if we've got industrial processes not returning that water we may need to be blowing down routinely maybe twice a shift mm. or have conductivity controls that blow down and skim the boiler automatically right so it's just the more demanding an application you're using the boiler for the more attention needs to be paid to it awesome awesome well we will put down below a link to a blowdown video that we actually did and you can uh, check that out and also, a little plug for Jude. Jude being the Boiler University instructor, they actually go through all the chemical testing and everything for those operators during part of your uh, class, correct? Absolutely, because at the end of the day, if you don't take care of the equipment, it can't take care of you. Right, so, right. so check out Boiler University and hopefully we see you at some point. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Appreciate Jude hanging out with us and talking about scale. Such an important topic and we have seen so many boilers um, that get damaged, obviously on the rental side, but also on the service side. I know Jude, as a service technician, has been out there many times when a customer did not take care of the boiler. So make sure that you're getting with your chemical people, you're getting to Boiler University, and learning about taking care of that water. Well, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you don't mind, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, share those videos and check out all of the other videos of Steam Cultures, the weekly boiler tips, and everything on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on The Boiler Point.